discharging our spirit. Uh, a few days ago, the Lord gave me this word, recharge, <laughs> recharge your spiritual man uh, or, or your spiritual life. I believe that's what he said, recharge your spiritual life. And, and it's so important. Uh, we, we get beat down just by the pressures of life mm -hmm. and that, that drains out the spiritual life. And so we have to keep building ourselves up and, uh, in, in the Lord. And it's not about natural things at all, but it's about spiritual things. Mm -hmm. And so I want to see how, how can we uh, recharge our spiritual life, uh, our spiritual batter batteries. How, how do, can we recharge those? Because we know the pressures of life. We've got external demands on all of us. We have all kinds of uh, difficulties and uh, situations that we're facing. And all of those will just beat us down and drain out the spiritual life. And so we need to think about how can we learn how to keep our spiritual life built up and our spiritual batteries uh, charged. So recharge, that's the word for tonight. Uh, there are three kinds of people. Uh, there are worldly people, carnal people, and spiritual people. Worldly people are those people uh, who do not know Jesus. They, they are uh, worldly and they may have, be good or they may be evil because eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, some people eat on the good side and some people eat on the evil side, but they all eat from one root. Uh, the, tr the, root go the tree goes down to a root and so it's the same root. And so uh, worldly people are going to be eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Some may be good, some may be evil, but they're worldly. They are not born again, and they have not renewed their mind. Okay, the second group are carnal, and they're carnal Christians. They're born again, but they have not renewed their mind. And uh, Romans 8 says that the a carnal mind is an enemy to God. It's hostile against God. It cannot obey God. Mm. Okay, so how do we renew our mind? Because that's what it's all about. Uh, moving from a carnal Christian to a spiritual person, we renew our mind. But, of course, Romans 12 says we sacrifice, and then we renew our mind. So there, we have to go through this process of death and life. Uh, uh, Jesus said, if you're going to follow mm -hmm. me, uh, you lay down your life and gain my life. And so we have to die to self and, and be crucified, take up the cross and follow him. And so that's what the death part is about. And if we don't do that, then we're not going to have our mind renewed. So it's a two-step process. We lay down our life and pick up the higher life of Jesus Christ. And then we're able to renew our mind. And it's all a spiritual process. And it's by the Holy Spirit. And so it's not just determination, oh, I'm going to renew my mind. But it's spending time with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what, to recharge us then. So we're going to have to have some time, a quality time with the Holy Spirit to recharge our spirit. Now it says in Proverbs 4, verse 23, uh, guard your heart. Mm -hmm. uh, above all else, guard your heart, for mm -hmm. out of it flow the issues of life. So where is life? It's in your heart. Mm -hmm. And we have to guard it above everything else. And, and you might say, well, I, I want to guard my finances, or I want to guard my body, uh, let's say from the pandemic, or I want to guard uh, my job. I want to guard all these things. But, but see, it's very clear. The thing to guard above everything else yes. is your heart. And if we don't guard our heart, then we'll lose our life and we'll lose everything else. But if we guard our heart, even if we lose other things, we can get them back. And Job is a good example of that. He lost everything. Everything. He lost it all. He, lo he was a very wealthy man. He was the richest man in the East, but he lost everything just by attacks of the devil. And uh, But he didn't 
uh, give up his integrity. You know, right. his wife said, yes, yes. after he lost everything, she said, just curse God and die. Well, that wasn't a real supportive uh, spouse in that situation. Right, exactly. Uh, 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 because she was saying, just give it all up. But, you know, because he kept his heart, it didn't. he didn't have perfect knowledge, but he did keep his heart. Uh, he had integrity. And at the end, God spoke to him and said, pray for your friends. Yes, he says, I'm, not going to, I'm not going to answer the prayers of your friends. This is really what he's saying. I'm not going to answer the prayers of your friends, but I will answer your prayers. I tell you, it's the same for you today. You have friends out there that God's not listening to their prayers because they have no faith. It's, it's yeah, not because yeah. he uh, shows partiality or favoritism. No, it's simply because who has faith? Mm. And so you have friends, or you may even have family members that do not have faith and God's not listening to their prayers, but he'll listen to your prayers and he'll do things for you that he will not do for other people. Mm. And so we do need to pray. And so what, mm. what God told Job was to pray for your friends. Yes. So you. when he prayed for his friends, and they really weren't his friends, they were they were very critical of him and they told him a lot of lies. And, and so they, they didn't have perfect knowledge and Job didn't have perfect knowledge. But the thing that brought Job out was he heard a living word from God. Hallelujah. And he acted on it and he prayed for his friends and then God restored everything to him <coughs> twice over. Yes, again. Over. And so that's important for us to consider that we don't have perfect knowledge, but we need to hear a living word from God, mm -hmm. a fresh word. And the bottom line of what we're looking at here is Luke chapter 1, verse 37. And it says, nothing is impossible with God. Mm -hmm. But you know, I studied that scripture out closer, and that word nothing has really three words in it. It says, not any." rhema or not Ooh. any fresh word living word mm. is without power to bring itself about Ooh, glory if you hear a fresh word from the lord just like job did yes. job heard something fresh from the lord a living word what he was to do if you hear a fresh word from the lord then you can do what he says and it will bring about whatever God promised you. So it, this is the answer uh, to the problem that many people are facing, that they get drained out. And I've talked about uh, mm -hmm. two of the types of people. And the third person is, is a spiritual person who's laid down his life, got that balance between life and death, and renewed his or her mind. Okay. So there's worldly people, and let me tell you, worldly people are going to do worldly things. things. You probably have some family members who, who do some evil things, family or friends or neighbors, and you worry about those people, you know what it's going to do? It's going to drain out your spiritual life. It'll suck it out. Well, the second group are carnal people. Carnal people are going to act just like worldly people. And why is that? Because they have not renewed their mind to God's word. Now, they're born again, and they may love the Lord, but they're still going to do some evil things. And if you put your focus on carnal things, they may even be family members, carnal people will do carnal things. things. And if you put your attention on carnal people doing carnal things, you might say, well, that's just not the right thing to do. It's a carnal thing to do. Carnal people will do carnal things. And if you worry about and put your focus on carnal people, doing carnal things, it will suck the spiritual life out of you. But you know, we're supposed to be spiritual people. That's right. And the way to become a spiritual person is to sacrifice, uh, lay your life down to take Jesus's life, the higher life, and renew your mind. Okay, and so you become a spiritual person by that. And, and what the Bible says, you who are spiritual 
restore those people yes. who fall. Amen. Who fall. Amen. Those carnal Christians who, who are just barely getting by and they fall this way and they fall that way. But we are to lift them up. Uh, don't don't lead them in a ditch. Don't be like the uh, Pharisees and uh, lawyers and Levites that go by uh, the a half dead naked Jew on the road between Jerusalem and Jericho and just leave him there. You've got to restore people. And when you start restoring people, and how can you do it? Well, you may be able to pray for them, just like Job prayed mm -hmm. for his friends. They were they were. Uh, they were not in a good position with God, but Job prayed for them. God wanted to do something for those people. Uh, but even those people that criticized Job, God wanted to do something for them, but he couldn't do it because of their prayers, because they didn't have faith. They didn't have knowledge about him, but Job had something inside of him. That's right. He had kept his integrity. And so that's what we've got to, to work on. And the bottom line is we've got to hear a fresh word. And that if we, when we hear a fresh word and do what the God tells us by his spirit, then we will restore our spirit man or recharge our spiritual life. And that is exciting to recharge. We've got to stay recharged. You, you know, uh, um, <clears throat> I believe it's uh, Proverbs 18, verse 9. Proverbs 18, verse 9 says that those people who get slack uh, in their work, they are consumed and destroyed. Uh, and why is that? Because they're not going on with God. Once you uh, stop, get to the point where you're not going on with God, but you just kind of level off here, uh, you get complacent. And, and you're happy and, and satisfied where you are, then that's really destruction is going to overtake you. That's what mm -hmm. Proverbs mm -hmm. chapter 18, verse 9 says. And so this word complacency, I want to talk about for just a moment, complacent. Uh, that means you're satisfied with your relationship with the Lord. A and Amos chapter 6, verse 1 says, Woe to you mm -hmm. who are complacent. Mm -hmm. You're just satisfied where you are. We've got to keep moving up. And when we stop moving on with the Lord, we stop drawing from the Lord, then we are destroyed. That's when we're destroyed. See, a lot of people get into the routines of doing godly looking things. They look godly. Um, for example, praying or reading the Bible, or even fasting. Those all look godly. They sound mm -hmm. godly, mm -hmm. but that's not enough because many of them are denying the power of God. Right. And see, if we're going to charge our spirit man or our inner, inner core, uh, that's our spirit man or our heart, if we're going to charge our inner man We've got to do it because we hear the fresh word. Mm -hmm. That's where the mm -hmm. that's where the energy comes from. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people get to the point where they think activities. Listen to me. Mm -hmm. Where they think activities uh, substitute for a relationship with God, because activities do not substitute for a relationship, a close relationship with God. And, and so what happens, people get satisfied in doing routines. They may get satisfied in studying the Bible, let's say 30 minutes every morning or praying 30 minutes every morning. And they get the satisfaction out of the routines. And that's a form of that's a form of religion, mm -hmm. religious activity, religious thinking. The, the in recharging your spirit, man, comes from encountering God. Oh, can't read this right here. I think Sherry has something she wants yes, to say. Yes, yes. The scripture has, has changed me. And it's in Psalm 63, verse 2. It's, um, and I, I read it to the eaglets. It's out of the Passion uh, Translation. And it says, I'm energized 
every time I enter your heavenly sanctuary to seek more of your power and drink in more of your glory. I love it. I love that. I love that scripture. So what we're talking about is energizing your inner man. And it comes from, it comes from the living word of God being Amen. connected to the power source. Ooh, well, our, our connection, of course, is through the Holy Spirit. God is the uh, uh, original source uh, of life and energy, mm. but it flows through the Holy Spirit. And, and so we don't get that recharge in our spiritual life without being connected to the Holy Spirit and letting him recharge our life on a daily basis. We, we can't go yeah. for three weeks and say, well, uh, I just didn't have time to spend with the Lord, uh, but now I'm going to come in and, well, th for three weeks, you, you've uh, sat down on the Lord. If you haven't been seeking him and drawing from says, him. Seek more of your power, Lord. Yes. So we've got to, to seek the power. Okay. So no living word, no fresh word is without power mm. to bring mm -hmm. itself about. Hallelujah. That is pretty exciting. Yes, it is. So Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, says that the word of God is alive and it's mm -hmm. full of energy, mm -hmm. not, not just power. Mm -hmm. See, power, and, and I like to say this a lot, that a, a sports car has a lot of power, but it doesn't, it's not energized until you put some gasoline in it and your foot on the accelerator and begin to and move. You turn it on. And and you've got to you've got to have energy. And so it's the energy. It's not just stored power. Whoa, I've got the power because I encountered God uh, 30 years ago. And so I've got I've got the power. Well, you, you've got are you energized? Are are you recharged? Are you being recharged uh, on a daily basis? Because a lot mm -hmm. of people just get satisfied with routines and, and religious activities, things that look godly, but they do not have life in them. They are not energizing. The energizing comes from the living word, the fresh word, not all of the written word. People people can memorize the whole Bible. Right, right. And that's intellectual power. Mm -hmm. But it has to come alive to you. And that's when it becomes Jesus Christ. That's it, it's, when, it's when it's be, it becomes alive to you. It becomes active. And it has enough power to bring the promise to pass. It carries within it. If you hear the word of God, the fresh word of God, uh, then it has enough power energy and power in it to bring the promise to pass. Now, you might say, well, I, I just never hear the Lord speaking. Well, he is the word of God, so he is always speaking. And so uh, we've told this uh, example before that uh, we know a, a dear lady that loves the Lord, and uh, but she had never heard the voice of the Lord. So mm -hmm. Sherry told her, begin confessing this, that mm -hmm. I, Jesus, I'm one of your sheep and I hear your voice mm -hmm. and the voice of a stranger I will not follow. Yes. Can repeat that over, over and, and over. over again. Jesus, I'm one of your sheep. I hear your voice and the voice of a stranger I will not follow. Well, what was precious about that dear lady is she immediately started hearing uh, the Lord and she began to understand how he spoke. Mm -hmm. Up until then, mm -hmm. she just didn't understand how he spoke because he doesn't speak like a man. He doesn't speak like you and I speaking to one another because it's this inward voice. It's mm -hmm. this voice mm -hmm. within you. And it, you know it's not you speaking. It's Jesus uh, speaking mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit, bringing his words alive in you. And that's what's going to energize you, going to recharge your spirit. A glory to God, and we all have to do it, and and we all get knocked down and, and drained of our spiritual life uh, on a daily basis. There's all kinds of things coming against all of us, and so we have to be cautious and protect our heart, and that's, if we protect our heart above everything else, that's what Proverbs said, 
to do in Proverbs 4, 23. Above everything else, protect your heart. So it's real important. And w the word of God energizes us. This is what uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13 says, that the word energizes those who believe. Ooh, and and yeah. I believe that all of you are believers. And so seek the Lord. Mm, mm, Find mm, out mm. what he's saying to you. Give him time to speak. I know a lot of people that fast. And, and they fast. Oh, they may fast two or three days. Or they may fast 21 days. And it's every year. And they do this for 30 years. <laughs> Every year they fast for 21 days, 21 days, the beginning of the year. And why do they do that? It's because they think it's a good activity to do. They are not trying to encounter God, nor has God told them to do it. It's a routine. And they're just doing it year after year and saying, oh, uh, I, I'm, I'm holy because I'm sanctifying myself. I'm setting myself up. For, for the first 21 days of the year, but they're not trying to seek God. They're not expecting to encounter God. They're just doing the activities of the fasting, or they may be reading their Bible, not to encounter God, but to have that time of reading the Bible, because that's a form of a form of godliness, but it denies the power. See, the reason to fast is to seek God, to put your fl flesh down. It's not to make yourself look good. It's to hear what God has said. I've fasted a lot in my life. I've spent a lot of times uh, even away from my family uh, in seclusion and and in, in retreats and fasting and nothing but me and God and I wanted to hear from him and he always spoke to me and that's why I know I have a calling on my life and I know what my calling is because I have fasted. I, I believe in fasting and, and I, but I fast in order to encounter God not to make me look good but to encounter God. I'm expecting God to speak to me. He is the word of God. He is always wanting to speak to you. Hallelujah. If you take time to encounter him, to hear what he has to say to you, he will speak life to you. And the words he speaks to you, the fresh words that he speaks to you will accomplish, it carries enough power in it, to accomplish the promise, whatever he's promised you, he will perform it. The living word, the fresh word, the rhema word carries enough power within it to accomplish the promise. And so that's the reason we fast. That's the reason we study the Bible is to encounter God, Amen. to, to Amen. hear his word, the fresh word, not to just say, oh, I have spent so many times in fast, so many days in fasting, so many hours in Bible study, so many uh, hours in prayer. Not, not all of that matters a bit uh, until you decide you want to encounter God, the living God and his word to come alive to you. And that's when you will be recharged. And I want to give you a, an example. Uh, we were in a congregation for a few years and uh, we were very engaged in that very uh, involved in it. Uh, well, Sherry and I were teaching uh, the high school and we were teaching, uh, that was on Sunday mornings and we were teaching the adults on Wednesday night and we were involved in their music programs and the uh, Christmas uh, uh, big event, Christmas celebration that uh, and, and the same in the Easter for the resurrection and, and so those programs were so outstanding. They were the most outstanding programs about Christmas and about Easter in our city. Uh, so people from all over uh, came to those programs. Mm -hmm. we, we did those programs over and over again uh, for several days uh, before Christmas and before uh, Easter. Uh, they were uh, lifting up Jesus and were praising the song, praising him. And, and I was the uh, uh, moderator 
uh, the narrator and these telling the Christmas story and, and, and you know, hundreds of people were coming from all over, mm -hmm. over the city. And, and uh, at the end of uh, the Easter program, I said, this is not real. I want the real. I was so involved in all of these activities. Our family was so involved, mm -hmm. but it was not real. And it looked good. It looked godly. It, oh, it lifted up uh, Jesus. Uh, we sang songs about Jesus, and, and they were very good. They were professional type of songs. And, and on the Christmas program, we had uh, camels uh, in the church building. Yes, we had sheep, yeah, and we had, we had all, all of these different things. But it was not, not real. real. It wasn't the life of God. And, and I said, I've got to have the real thing. And so uh, we left after that uh, because I knew I needed the connection with God and with the Holy Spirit. And, and you know, after we left, the uh, choir director, he was the leader of those big productions. Uh, he became unfaithful to his wife and divorced and left his wife and children. But yet he was the head of these big programs, but they had no life. The, they looked good. The, the community came out and supported yeah, them. Yeah, we sold out every and night. Every, every session we sold out. But I tell you, there was no real life there. And what is important is spiritual life. And you need to keep your life uh, spiritual and keep your uh, spirit man charged up and recharged because life will knock it all out of you and, and suck it out of you and and you're looking at the carnal people doing carnal things and natural people doing natural things it's going to drain the spiritual life out of you and and you will just draw back from God you've got to keep pressing on once yeah. you sit down and stop drawing from God you're Spirit man is going to swivel, shrivel, shrivel up, up and, and you're going to lack the life that you need to move you farther and higher with God because that's what it's all about. He said, Woe to those people that are complacent in the presence of God. He said in Zion, but that's a that's a type of the presence of God. And, right. and they get in a place where a God ought to be, and yet they just get complacent, they get satisfied, and then it says. They will be destroyed. Amos 6 1 said, Woe unto you. And then Proverbs 1 32 says, Why woe? It said, Because you'll be destroyed. Yes. You get complacent on God. You sit down on God, and God's moving on. His cloud's moving on. You get complacent with Him. It's going to destroy you. I, 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 don't, I don't like to think about that, but that's what happens. That's what the Bible mm -hmm. said. We've got to keep moving mm -hmm. on moving on with him and where are we going to be recharged and where are we going to be re-energized it's by hearing the living Amen. word Amen. it's not by memorizing scriptures it's not by studying scriptures it's not by praying it's not by fasting it's by encountering god the recharge you've got to, to be recharged you've got to be connected to god encounter god and receive the energy of god into your life and that will charge you and recharge you and keep you moving on with god Hallelujah. <laughs>